I'm Sam, the lead writer for Solar.com and a happy solar owner for three years now. And with me today is Brian Lynch. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, Brian. Sam, uh, thanks for inviting me to do this with you. Uh, I lead strategy and policy for REC. REC is a solar manufacturer, been in solar for two decades, and a happy solar owner. I like that uh, for seven years, and my system is now cash flow positive uh, ahead of schedule. So really right. happy with my personal investment in solar. Fantastic. So what is going on with solar and specifically the 30% tax credit? Yeah, a lot of news in the last couple of weeks. Uh, so Congress, the week prior to Memorial Day, uh, passed their version of what's called the Reconciliation Bill. It has a lot of provisions in it. And, and this is all encompassing from a budgetary standpoint for the federal government. What we care about is two specific items for the solar industry. One is it calls for the removal of the consumer tax credit for Section 25D, effective at the end of the year, for systems that are not placed in service. And it's an important distinction. You can't start a project December 30th and expect to get that tax credit. The other thing it does is calls for an elimination of the ability of lease systems to monetize the tax credit. So the industry is interpreting it as both leases and cash and loan systems will lose the access to the tax credit uh, pretty quickly, different timelines, but effectively by the end of the year. So let's talk about that. What's the what happens next for this budget reconciliation bill, and when will we have certainty on these tax credits? Yeah. So what happens next is the the bill was sent from the House to the Senate. Uh, Senate Finance picks it up. They work in committee to review what the House has done. Historically, the Senate has always been a little bit more nuanced and softer in their approach to this type of legislation. So it's assumed that the Senate will come in with a little bit more of a even keel, a steady hand to create more certainty for businesses and consumers, understanding that it has to then go back to the House. And then ultimately, the president has to sign it. So to answer your question succinctly, Sam, we think that by uh, late July, early August, the bill leaves the Senate, goes back to the House. And then there's a question of how much it ping pongs back and forth and how accepting will the House be of the Senate proposal before the president ultimately signs it. So still uncertainty, what's your advice for homeowners who want solar and battery storage for their homes? What should they do now? Yeah, I've, I've often said that today is the best day to go solar uh, because utility rates are always increasing. And so preserving your value from solar from your rooftop is, is always the best thing today. But honestly, today really is the best day to go solar uh, because with the risk of the tax credits going away at the end of the year or earlier, uh, consumers that have maybe considered or thought about going solar, it's in their best interest to start those projects as soon as possible. What will happen is if there's 10,000, 100,000 other homeowners out there that are maybe been passive waiting for interest rates to drop or for another reason to go solar, if they all say on the same day, oh, I should really go solar to get that tax credit, uh, there's a finite amount of material and construction crews that can build these projects. And so someone that signs a project maybe August or September would be at risk to not have their system placed in service by the end of the year. So today is really the, the best day to activate your project. So there's an element of speed and what can you tell homeowners about safeguarding yourselves with a, in a high frequency environment like this? Yeah, unfortunately, this oil industry has its uh, fair share of, of hucksters and scallywags and I really credit to solar.com for writing articles focused on protecting consumers uh, to on how to avoid scams, what questions to ask. Honestly, one of the best ways uh, for the consumers to uh, mitigate the risk of being exposed to, to these scammers is to work through platforms like solar.com. Solar.com will aggregate local quotes from reputable, qualified installers in the market. They will not add you to, to list to get harassed by other companies, and you'll get assigned a project manager and a success manager to see your project through, as well as an advisor to help you understand the differences between the quotes. So working with an advocate and qualified contractors, whether it's solar.com or directly in your local market is always the best course of action. Let's take a look bigger picture here. Say you have solar, you work in the industry, you're just a general uh, proponent of solar. What can you do to voice your support for these tax credits? Yeah, and I should point out that even if you're not eligible to go solar, because maybe you don't own your own home or maybe you are surrounded by trees, Solar benefits all ratepayers. Uh, your neighbor having solar reduces the utility's cost to serve you, which ultimately lowers their cost of electricity that they sell you. So every homeowner that cares about energy dominance, that cares about energy security, that cares about lower utility bills should support solar. 
Uh, easiest thing to do is uh, there's a website that was set up, support25d.org. That's a super wonky tax credit reference, but support25d.org. That links to a form where you can input your information and that sends a form letter that you can modify uh, to your federally elected officials. So your uh, representatives in the House and the Senate. And it's really impactful because what happens is the staffer or maybe their AI agent receives these and they score it and they tally it up. And when they're thinking about tax on tips and Medicare preservation, all the other things that are part of this reconciliation bill, if they get a thousand or 10,000 tick marks that say, hey, I support solar, uh, they're going to care about that because ultimately elected officials serve you, the voter. And again, bigger picture with this bill, you mentioned the solar tax credits are not the only things at risk here. Um, lots of clean energy incentives created by the Inflation Reduction Act are being phased out, cut to, to some extent. What does that do for the broader electricity grid and the investments that have been made in clean energy in the last four years or so? To answer your question directly, if it goes away, you will see a rapid increase in utility prices. Solar is the fastest technology to deploy on the grid, and it deploys at a significantly greater rate than any other energy generating technology. As we put more data centers online, more AI, more electric vehicles on the road, our increased demand for electricity uh, is at probably the highest rate it's been since the industrialization era. And the only thing that can meet that is solar in a very rapid time frame. Nuclear takes a decade plus to put online. Natural gas reserves, uh, other energy generating technologies are simply not fast to deploy because they're high capex and very com complex projects. So as a rate payer, if you're paying X cents today, if this bill passes in two years, it's likely you could see your utility rate increase 20, 30% just because the demand on the grid relative to the available supply. So what will happen will emerge from this is the solar industry will, will shrink rapidly. There'll be tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of job losses in the near term. But from those ashes, you will see a more resilient industry emerge. Manufacturers will continue to invest. Uh, installers will, will find new work because consumer and industrial demand for solar will not go away. It simply gets knocked back a year or two, and then it will emerge in a post-subsidization market. Well, Brian, I know you're a busy man, so I thank you for your time here today and your insights. Um, we'll give you a chance for one last shout out or, uh, or plea to homeowners here. But other than that, I can give you some time back. Sam, I appreciate it. Uh, thanks everyone for, for watching this video. If you're engaged, if you're inspired, uh, support your local contractors. Uh, if you're considering going solar, solar is local, right? Solar.com enables you to connect with your local contractors in a platform that protects you and supports you. If you don't think solar is right for you, you're not eligible to go solar, I would strongly urge that you go to support25d.org. There's some great social media content that's been put out there. You can uh, put on your Twitter or LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram that you care about these issues. Galvanize your neighbors. There's a lot of marches that are happening uh, in state capitals for people to stand up and say, I care about solar. I care about energy choice. I care about the environment. And so if you want to get involved, now is the best time uh, because this all comes to a head here in the next month or two.